Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us yet again on The Encounter Nights. My name is Caleb Juma and this is The Rise of a Chosen Generation. I hope that these Encounter Nights have been very beneficial for you and I hope that with the teachings that have been coming, uh, you've been picking up on something and you've been growing in Christ, which is ultimately why we are here, you know, and I just I just keep praying that even as we continue to come together every Friday for these encounter nights, that we may also begin to function at a greater level at each moment, you know, because in essence, that's what we're called to do, to continue to grow and to multiply the grace that has been given to us, you know, as good stewards. So today, I just want to touch on something very briefly um, before we move on to just take time in a moment of worship, uh, even as we move. So let's just begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, O King of Glory, for the word that you're bringing to us in this moment. I ask, O King of Glory, that you continue to speak to us, continue to breathe upon everything, O Heavenly Father, that I will be saying, so that it may bear fruit in every aspect in our lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay, so we're just going to quickly read from uh, John 2, verse 13 to 17. And then we'll read from Matthew 21. Okay, so the Bible says that, Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip, a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house has eaten me up. This is Psalm 69 verse 9. So the Jews answered and said, Okay. Then we'll move on to Matthew 21. Matthew 21, verse 12 to 14. Just to add a bit more context to the scripture that we have read. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it into a den of thieves. So basically, we come to God through the process of salvation. Through a moment of salvation, uh, we come to God and Jesus Christ comes into us and we are positioned together with Christ Jesus. So when we come to salvation, uh, as the Bible tells us, that we are seated together in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. And where Christ is seated is at the right hand of the Father. So that is how is that that is where we are placed at salvation positionally. But it is through sanctification that we become like Christ. It is through sanctification that we become like Christ functionally. So salvation will bring us, salvation will position us, but it's sanctification that will cause us to function according to our new identity. So there's one aspect of sanctification that I just wanted to highlight on, uh, which is purification. And I just want to start by saying that Jesus is committed to your purification. Jesus is committed heavily to your sanctification. We see, as the Bible has quote, uh, as as was quoted in John two, the scripture from Psalm sixty nine verse nine. The Bible says that the zeal of his house has consumed him. In other words, he is very passionate about his temple. And the Bible tells us in First Corinthians six, should be verse nineteen, that do you not know? that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who was given to you by God. So Jesus Christ is very passionate about your sanctification. He is very passionate about my 
sanctification and purification. So basically, just to have context of the scriptures that we have read, the temple was located in Jerusalem. So people would come from all over the place to gather there and offer sacrifices. So you'll find that there were people who were from that region who began to take advantage of that because people didn't want to travel from where they were traveling from with, uh, with livestock. So they would come with money instead. And then when they get into the temple, there's the money changes there. They'll change their monies there if need be. And then they buy the livestock that was necessary for the sacrifices, you know? And then when Jesus comes, uh, he, 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 is, he starts to make a cord, a weep, <laughs> a weep of cords, you know, he starts to wake, he makes a weep of cords and begins to turn tables. Yes. Jesus was a DJ. I mean, cords and turning tables. <laughs> okay. I'm just playing around. So now he begins to drive out the people. Um, I just want to make, I just want to highlight on something very important, even as we move along. The Bible says that when he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and overturned the tables. So first and foremost, one thing that Jesus targeted was not the sheep, but it was the people that had come in with the sheep. The Bible says in Amos 2, Verse 9, that yet I destroyed the fruit above and dug out the root beneath. So basically, when G Jesus' purification process is holistic, it does not just deal with the fruit, which many of us are in the habit of doing. We like to do fruit management. But Jesus comes and begins to cleanse us from within. He deals with the root because without the root, the tree has absolutely no capacity to form fruit, isn't it? So he doesn't just come and target the action, but he deals with the root, even though the fruit is also dealt with. We shouldn't forget that the Bible tells us in 1 John 1 verse 9, that he is faithful and just to forgive our sin. So that is dealing with the fruit. And secondly, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That means every predisposition to sin is also being cleansed away from us. That is how committed Christ is to our purification. He's not just after reorienting our steps, but is after our hearts to make sure that when our hearts are pure, we are able to live and do as he does. As the Bible says in Titus, should be Titus 2, that to the pure, all things are pure. So once our hearts are purified, we are able now to live according to the dictates of purity, which is the word of God, isn't it? So basically we see that he drives out uh, the money changes. He drives out the people. And as he drives those out, he also they take their sheep, they take their monies with them, but he overturns the tables also. So when you come to a place of understanding that there's so many things that could be planted into our lives, there's so many things that we ourselves can let in to our lives that come to steal our joy, that come to steal our peace. But ultimately, whatever those things are, they're assigned to steal our communion, they are assigned to steal our affection for God. You know, like these things will come and turn our affection from God to whatever those things are. For example, fear is also a form of worship, isn't it? Because as opposed to turning our focus and attention to God, we've turned our focus and attention to perhaps a an unfavorable situation. We've turned our focus to the enemy himself, which is why he tries to intimidate us so much that our eyes remain on him. And that in itself is a form of worship, but nobody really wants to talk about that, you know. But Christ is determined to cleanse us. Christ is determined, is committed to our purification so that our focus and affections may not be stolen from him. 
So there's many things that will happen in our lives. There's so much opposition that will come against us, even as we try to advance the gospel, to advance the kingdom of God. But I'm here to tell you today that it is possible to go against opposition without turning your affection from God. It is very possible for us to continue in life in spite of the hard circumstances that come to us without shifting our focus from God. And that is how we will end up walking as he did. Because when Jesus Christ was here on the earth, he says that whatever he sees his father do, he does it as well so that he may be glorified. So anything that tries to shift our focus in essence is trying to drift us from ultimately functioning like Christ. Because if we cannot see what Christ is doing in a moment, if we cannot hear what Christ is saying in a moment, we are unable to function as he does in that given setting. You know, in spite of whatever it is that we might be going through in a moment, God is always speaking and giving us direction. You know, so if we're able to turn to, to tune in and really listen to what he is saying and really see what he is up to, to understand his heart for a moment, we'll be able to flourish as a church, we'll be able to flourish as individuals. So today, even as we I just want us to take a moment in worship, just take a moment to ask that the Lord may purify us. Because here's the thing, when it comes to sanctification and purification, God cannot do it in us apart from us. There has to be an invitation and that invitation is in repentance. It's in confession and repentance. You know, that is the invitation that God is waiting for so that he can begin to work in us. So I just want us, even as we take this moment in worship, to just surrender our hearts to God, to just take this moment, excuse me, to invite the Holy Spirit to begin to cleanse us. So wherever you are, if you are able, if you can be in a place where it's quiet and just begin to speak to your Father and just begin to ask that the Holy Spirit may come in you, may, may, may come in this moment and begin to purify you and to cleanse you and bring to light those things which he desires to read you off in the mighty name of Jesus. i
Cast me not away from thy presence Please don't take your spirit from me And restore the joy of salvation So that I may Oh, that I